Hey, what's good, people? This is episode 102. This is the Option Podcast. That boy, Sharif, the episode starts right now. Hey, what's up, people? You guys have asked me over and over and over again, and I deliver because for me, I've got to give the people, give the people what they want. Sharif, what's good, baby? Hey, man, what's up? How you doing, man? Hey, listen, thank you for making this possible because like for technology, Zoom says all, doesn't it? Yeah. (laughs) So... That's I true. just got back from Manhattan Beach. Um, I was coaching mm-hmm. Jeff Samuels and um, yeah. uh, Kyle Ratty, and we lost to David Lee. David Lee is now playing oh, Beach. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so. and he kept missing from like the paint over the top. He just kept paint brushing over the top. And I'm like, yeah, man, I could have used the from Sharif. Indoor, from indoor, from, <laughs> the transition from indoor to beach is really not easy. It isn't. Uh, I think the yeah. people, um, this is, I guess, my first question. Do you find that, like, outside hitters and setters, did they, did they, they translate to the beach the, the fastest or yeah. the, the most seamless? Like, um, yes. It's, yeah. it's more easier for them because they are more fully, like, um, they have all the skills. So, so it's easier for them to, to make the transition to beach. But for the middle block, the, the opposite, that's, that's going to be tough. Yeah, it's always you tough. Need a and, lot of work. And David Lee was a middle, <laughs> so. Oh yeah, can you imagine? So when you play him, maybe nothing but sky balls, right? <laughs> yeah, just put the ball there. Uh, did Ahmed play um, outside hitter, or was he straight yes. to beach? Yes, yes, he was um uh, an outside hitter with the club here in Jaish, the army, and the national team, and yeah. Nice. He was a he was he was he was not, he was not bad player. In, yeah, and did you in, play right side? No, I never played indoor. No, okay, good. You you have chose wisely, my man. Say do our mutual yeah. friend. If uh, say do our mutual <laughs> friend do, yeah. played um yeah, outside and uh, Shamzu yeah. and Shamzu played on um, oh, right side. Cool. So. Yeah. Nice. So I met them in New York. You know how like Africa oh. or like Ghana they have like hard top. Um, like yeah. outdoor, uh, Central Park mm-hmm. has the same thing. So I had Seydoux left mm-hmm. side, Shamzu right side. I'm setting, and I was, oh, that was that was just a lot of fun. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, I played also one time the four, four man by four. Yes. Here in the that was cool. Ah. Was that the that was McKibbins? Really cool. Was that Madison McKibbins? Yes. Or, yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That so was really cool. So. I usually start from the beginning, but for you and me, I'd like to start with the most recent. Let's go to the Olympics, all right? You have really, really good momentum this year. You're you're Cancun, right? Two good Mm -hmm. second place finishes. Uh, The third one, you finish first. Mm -hmm. Now, let's start with the bronze medal match. Let's, if you can remember the best way you know how, I want you to take me through that last point. Um, they're serving to um, Ahmed, and Ahmed, yeah. yeah, and Ahmed pokes over. Actually, I'll do even one better. I'm, I'm, I'm good at this whole technology thing. I'm actually going to show you the video. <laughs> I'm DJ, spin that stuff. Here it is. Ready? Take. Mm-hmm. Was there something you two talked about match point, or did you just line up? Uh, we just line up. We never talk about um, even like um. Because sometimes even you talk about one, what is not, what well, what is next can put you under pressure that you not e- you will not be able to play your game, what's coming. So yeah, we we never talk about it. We just said okay, we are doing good. We've been playing so good this year. So why not? We just came here to do the same thing. Yeah. You don't have to think about is it's Olympics or what. We just came to keep the level up. That's so, what yeah. That's what it looked like to me. It looked like match point. It looked like one one. You looked like the guys you were you, you were playing as if the score was one to one. Um, yes. I've been doing this for a long time, and I've seen yeah, athletes yeah. just play normal. So here's my other question: Since you play every play like that, when you won, and you're gonna love this one, when you won. What was your, what was, um, when, how long did it take to set in that, that it actually happened? 
you know because sometimes you play and it's one one and then you're like wait the game's over wait i'm a bronze medalist wait what the hell yeah. <laughs> i'm on the podium i got some some hardware go ahead brother sorry yeah yeah so it was was like just a few seconds and, and just like oh uh, once i'm go out here they're gonna call me like an uh, olympic medalist so what's was something really emotional i never thought about it yeah i just wanted to be a uh, I, I mean, me and Dijan, we just wanted to be uh, the top player, top elite player. So we never thought about okay having a goal, but we believe that we we had we, we we could do more than what people expect. So we mm -hmm. knew that we gonna get something, but we didn't know right. it was gonna be the gold, bronze or silver. But we knew that we mm -hmm. we gonna get something. So we just said okay, let's just play normal without no stress and without no pressure. Let me actually let's go back to the end. Yeah. was really was really emotional it's like um this got this type of women are priceless so yeah it's you're gonna have this you're gonna have this maybe once in your lifetime so yeah well i think for you it's probably it's gonna happen again i think you're very young i think the yeah. both of you i think yeah, the both of you are a good team good sorry continue yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh you know we we can we can we can bring it back um for the for the price and we are focused and you know I can say for this Olympics, I can say we could be, we are, we are like the underdog. Nobody didn't expect that. We, the, we could play really well like that. Yeah. So, and you know, every time when we are underdog, we do something really good. So we like to be in the underdog, uh, underdog um, place. You, so You embrace it. You yeah, embrace so, it. Yeah. Yes. It's like a motivation. We said, oh, we work hard. I can say harder than... Uh, I don't see any players in the world who can outwork us when we really work hard. So nobody couldn't expect that this result, but the, the beach volleyball players knew that how hard we were working. Mm -hmm. They knew that. So people just said, okay, we have good physical, but we work really hard. Yeah. Sharif. You can ask Phil, you can ask Phil or, yeah. or yeah. Nick. We, we've been, we've been, <laughs> We've been with them in the training camp. We really know we suffered a lot yeah. in the practice. That's why when we play, people think, oh, it's easy. But the hard the work, the practice is the difficult part. Sharif, this is who you are, man. This yeah. is who you are, okay? We have yeah. some diehards here in the United States. Um, a combination yeah. of grouchy old men, right? Yeah. Oh, just, you know. Then you got these young up-and-comers. Micah Maha actually says hi. Yeah. You don't, you don't yeah, know saw, him, but yeah. he knows you. I saw him. Oh, yeah, you I saw, saw him. Saw him. Yeah. I follow. I follow everything. Yeah. How are you? He's coming. He's flying the pole in the place I'm indoor. So if you guys oh, cross really paths, not. he's a really, really good kid. But yeah. This, speaking for guys like me, I've been coaching for 20 years, playing for 30, commentating for 10. Mm -hmm. We know a baller when we see it. We know ambition when we see it. Sharif, my brother, this is who you are. This is you. Yeah. This, this, my man, is all you. This is you, man. This is you. We, yeah. got, you got fans out here. You got a big following. And it's, yeah. not, just, and it's not just the hardcores anymore. You know, you win Cancun, yeah, sure. you, you finish second, you're on that podium. Guess what, brother? You know, and the thing I like about you, and I promise I'll shut up because all of my friends are like, oh, you talk more than the other guy. And, you know, right. And you probably see me talk with say do. I've been running my yeah, mouth. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, there's an old saying, success money doesn't change you. It shows yeah. who you really are. Yeah, you, because you were the same Sharif. I met in FIVB Las Vegas 2018. Yeah. That you're, yeah. you were that guy that no one knew. You're still that guy. This, Sharif, is you, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, sorry, man. More questions. <laughs> I'm gonna get all, don't make me start crying, dude. I'm going to cry like a grown man, man. My yeah. wife's going to have to run in the room but, and yeah. slap me. <laughs> man up, boy. But, you know, this is, yeah. But, you know, sometimes, you know, some like youngster when they start really to get successful, like they just feel like okay they are over the top and they start to change and you know just think about who you were before to reach that level. So if you want to go to another level, you gotta be, you gotta go back and be the same guy you were to go to the next level. So you gotta, you gotta keep it because as much you just go out of your focus or of your 
like um, of your mind, you go down. You yeah. gonna be like this, and then toof, you go down mm-hmm. and you are forgotten. That's it. One hundred percent. The level is going every four years, three years. You gonna see some new young generation, and for sure in Paris, yeah, you gonna see a really, and they're coming. really, really young, <laughs> and they're yes, coming, and they're coming. Yep. So you gotta be, you gotta be calm down, and then focus and try to get used to the new level that is coming. So we were there one year. We were not in rush, so mm-hmm. we knew that we gonna be there. Yep, and you've trusted your coaching. You trusted your patience. Yeah, um, you got yes, a you have a re- yeah. you have a really good coach. And to me, yes, um, and I, I heard I heard I heard the feelings of a lot of my American contemporaries. But there's there is a big difference in coaching. I know that you guys don't do a lot of training groups. I think you you think yes. you get more productivity, more repetitions, and more focused yes. training than yeah. Take, take me through. Yeah, sometimes okay. Sometimes we need we need. Uh, uh, it's part of the team. So, but sometimes we do, we got we gotta fix something on us first before to ex- before to practice what we are gonna play in the game. Sometimes you need to change your skills first. What is good for you? Then even without teams, you can do it. It's gonna be like um a rep- repetition, repetition, repetition. Each each moment or each ball that you have, you you know that what what you gonna do. So. We, we we are really grateful to have uh, this type of coaching and mm-hmm. stuff, and the federation also. They really, you know, they trust in the work of the the coach. They don't bore him whatever he needs. They are ready to do it hundred yeah. percent. So that's that's um, behind any great team. There is a great staff behind. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. I've been too. There is. Well, first of all, before, I want to ask you something about Ahmed, but there's something, you mentioned an underdog thing earlier on. Sharif, there's nothing more liberating in the world than, yeah. than everybody yeah. thinking you're not going to win. There's nothing more, <laughs> yeah. f- f- as far as pressure and like not having to carry this heavy backpack everywhere you go, whoosh. Yeah. There's nothing more yeah. liberating. So, but I, and, mean, and, I mean, even even maybe in the media, they, won't, they didn't think that. Okay, we could win, but like if you ask the really beach volleyball players, they were like, "Oh, that's not the team. We are avoiding that team because they are really playing good." Yeah, <laughs> and you know they are really physically they are ready, so <laughs> I won't meet that team. So yeah. we were like, "Okay, we're not scared. We're not scared to 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 cross anything." Yeah, they supposed to be scared to to meet us. So okay. so we were like, "Okay, we are ready to." to take the head off. So. Yeah, look, look uh, I, I was coaching a qualifier yesterday and everyone's trying to avoid David Lee and um, yes. um, Sean Cook, who Sean Cook is. Um, yes, Cook, yes. Cook, yeah. yes, I know. He's like a poor man's Reed he Pretty. Was, his snap is really good. His whip, yes. right? His whip is really fast. Yes, big black. And, and, you know, I told Jeff and Kyle, I'm like, D- if there's no way around, you got to go through. If there's no way, if there's yes. no way around, yeah. <laughs> You have to go yeah, through, go and through. and that's something. Yeah. I'm bringing it back to you because that's something you and Ahmed uh, realized right away. You weren't thinking, "Oh, we're in this pool, so we might have to face this team or whatever." And this and that. Um, how much of that is true? That you're just you're just worried about who you play in front of you. Because we were, we just build the confidence. You know, like mm-hmm. I said before, we we were we've been playing good, beating some really great team, maybe twice because we did maybe six six final out of eight so we we we, we almost play all the top 10 teams and we beat them mm-hmm. so we just lost maybe three or four times against mm-hmm. some teams that they really play good so we were like okay yeah that's, you can do it it's their day yeah because or, and you can yeah. see and you can see that these guys are more, are more under pressure or really nervous more than us so we we're like okay yeah. just go ahead it's just at the end of the day spot set and spike you know, on a, that's, that's, a that is nothing. I had Todd Rogers on my podcast of uh, um, yeah. two weeks ago, and mm-hmm. I called on um, ah- Ahmed um, the best defender the world is not talking about. Um, well, not the world, America. Um, yeah. But my question to you, and I bring it to you because Todd and I had this conversation, yeah. and I think he wanted me to yeah. ask you this. Yeah, sure. What improvements have you seen? an Ahmed's um, transition game that has from, let's just say from 2019 before the world yeah. went to hell. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, from 2019 to now, 
what, give me one or two things that you you you've noticed or people have been saying about uh, Khmer's transition digging to transition to kill. Um, the floor is yours. I mean, yeah, I mean the process starts since I can since we get back to play together in two thousand eighteen. Yeah, we have like um a big issue on on uh, on the side out thing. So we said like, okay, now the first year is just to improve the side out, mm-hmm. and then we improve the side out. And then we won two medals in one year. And then we improve the next year. We improve the transition and breeding. That's and then in that part, he really worked so hard with the coach, how to read, which ball to take care, which which ball to don't just to leave. And just if the guy make it, it's good by him. So we read it. He read it, all this stuff, all, all, all these things with the coaches. And also he watched some different games and, he he really worked so hard, especially in the practice and in the gym and yeah, that's I think we gained more maturities this um uh, this last year because this is this was the, the last the last year of the process right because um uh, we start step by step like space by space and try try to know how to develop it much better and yeah that's the that's the the result of how Ahmed can read. He's, he he got the speed, so he doesn't need anything because what what the others, mm-hmm. some you can see some in the tour you can see some really good defenders, they can dig the ball good but they are not fast, and right. they are not explosive than Ahmed. So Ahmed yeah. got everything. Yes, he does. The way just he he just needed them uh, to read better yep. and to understand the and better understanding of the game. That's that make a difference right now. Yeah, I cop- can say he's one of the best right now. Yeah, copacetic. I would, I, I actually, you know what? And I'm not just saying this because you're on the show. I would say top three, because I'm, yeah. a, I'm a kid from yeah. Brooklyn. Definitely. Okay, I'm too, Definitely. I'm too old for nonsense. So you know, I'm gonna just tell you yeah. the truth. Yeah, um, sure, top, sure. top three, top three. Yeah. Um, loop, maybe Lupo. Five. When uh, you know whatever Christian Sorum. I mean, sometimes when you're so yeah. good, you forget about those guys too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, sure. Yeah, I think Taylor Crab is like outside of the top five, but like if we're talking yeah. elite defenders. Um, yeah. yeah, make make mine Ahmed. Now, and when I saw you guys play in 2018, I mm-hmm. saw a significant improvement in Ahmed making one move to the ball, because, yeah. uh, like you said, because he has really good speed, because he has really good twitch reaction, and because he has a really good read, he can make two moves sometimes and still get the dig. But yeah, but to win, to beat the best of the best. He knew yes, he had to consolidate two moves to one. Yes, and um, yes. how much do you agree with that? Talk talk ah, to me a little 100%. bit about that. No, no, hundred percent. I agree, hundred percent with you. And yes, because to be the to be in the elite, you gotta be, you gotta have your, you gotta put your best every time. That's what that's what the coach was saying. We cannot come and just relax. And say, okay, no problem. Next, next. No, mm. you gotta be the best and play your ball like it was your last game. Yeah, man. Of your yeah. life, so that's yeah. why we fight every single ball. It's like um, uh, even leading. You know, sometimes we had one practice with uh, Nick and Pitt. Uh, there was one rally, and then we were really exhausted, tired. The humidity was really hot, so I was running left, right. Me, Ahmed was diving, and he like, <laughs> feel was like, "Oh, you guys, you gotta so you gotta slow down. You know, you're gonna get more tired." Mm-hmm. But we got we got this mentality that um, we play the. The game like was the last game of our life. Yep. What's one thing? What's one thing you as an individual? And we're, and we're not closing mm-hmm. the book on Ahmed right now. I mean, yeah, we can yeah, t- sure. we can talk about him all day. Yeah, you know, because sure. he, because yeah. he's not all gonna, that. We're not gonna finish. It. No, right? That's that. Look, uh, this file only holds two hours, but we can we can do the whole. Yeah, sure. But um, sure. let's talk. Let me uh, let's get a question in on you. What's one thing? that you'd like to improve not significantly let's what's one thing you want to tweak a little bit that you think that's going to make you a better player i'll be at offense I mean, we, we can talk about blocking defending we could talk about offense and we can talk about 100 things um i just want you to pick one what's the first one that came to your mind um i would say like the um, the maturity of the game how to understand better understanding of the game yeah. that's our next step and get more skills Mm -hmm. because we are ready to for all skills Mm -hmm. we need to have all that skills so that will be really helpful for us 
as a team and individually also. I think that's that's the thing that we have to improve for the before parties because the game going to be more intense mm-hmm. in the next three years. Yeah, the muscles because between every four years. Yes, every yeah. four years the game's getting more higher, higher, more youngster, full of energy, and the younger ones are six, getting better. Six, more than more than six five foot, ready to. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, <laughs> right? Ready, yeah, ready, ready to smash you. So jump, jump setting. <laughs> All right, six, six, yes, eight guys, yes. jump setting. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be ready for that. The game, the game won't be easy. Yeah. So, so for you, it's really just the muscles between your ears, right? You're just trying to yes. just compartmentalize that. I totally understand that. Um, I think you have improved on being emotionally high a little bit, and then you bring it back. Yes. Um, my old coach, um, Aldis Lucis, he's um, Tina Gurdino's uh, godfather. He lives in Latvia. His name yeah. is Aldis Lucis. Oh, cool. Yeah. He, um, he's my mentor for indoor volleyball, and now, now, and now I'm a beach coach. But he told me for every five points you get emotionally high, you're going to give up nine. <laughs> on, if you're too high, you're going to give up nine on the low. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. So that, that's sure. been, that's because, been a, yeah, yeah that, that was that a challenge for you before and that, that you're, you're just kind of working out? Yeah, that's, that was a challenge. That's one of the challenges that we had to face because we were so anxious to make some points, so anxious to finish some points. And, you know, we got to take our time because the ball is, the ball it, is with us. So we have to take care of, of it and uh, do it, make sure that we make the right decision every single point, every single ball that we have to finish it. That was one of the, and get the solution, how to fix the ball, how to take care more of the ball in easy ball. So we got, we got, we got, we, we got a lot of work to do what's, what's coming next also. So we got to improve something else because to be in the top, you got to be really 100% mm-hmm. focused and and really hard work because now we don't have we don't have the Lunch. we are already there yeah so you don't the, you're not sneaking up challenge. on anyone you're not sneaking yeah. up on anyone anymore yeah <laughs> yeah so right now we're not we're not we're not backing up from top anyone so we got the medal yeah that what everybody was looking for so now we are just we are ready to to be in the top that's the that's the biggest challenge for us right now how to stay there and how to play like mm-hmm. over from zero to ten to keep between nine between eight and nine points playing yeah each game we have yeah, and you know that's going to be a challenge because now the teams that play you are going to yeah. be like we we want to test ourselves against the best so let's play yes. our best against them so from now yes. on i know you've earned you have earned every victory you've gotten so and I yes. and we all accept that, but from this point mm-hmm. on, you take that, you multiply that by one and a half, and that's yes. what it's gonna it's, be. So you gotta it turn was, it up with it's him. It's like yeah, it's like it's like I just put it on myself when I was playing with some was a great, one of the greatest like players in the world when I was playing with uh, the Brazilian legends like Phil and Nick, Gabe. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, these guys are legends. So I I gotta test myself. Yep. How how I can be great. Yep. In the future so i just think about that so when they come they're not ready to back up they will fight for to to be say okay we beat the olympic medalist right you know yeah. that's a challenge so that's um that's really that's a really great challenge to face in the future nice so sharif this is like this podcast um some podcasts are interviews this is like more of a conversation so yeah, sure. you, uh, so just kick back and relax but allow me yeah. for two seconds to put my interview hat on and just ask you yeah. the fun the fun but simple but difficult question what got you into okay, volleyball go what got you into volleyball right. why volleyball what got you into volleyball how'd you start Look, in America, because, um, it's good-looking girls, okay? That's just, you know, we see a good-looking girl, we're like, oh, this sport looks easy, because, and then it's not, because, and then we play I started with basketball, because I started with basketball. Okay. And then that that was not the sport that I really felt myself to to enjoy it, you know. But in uh, beach volleyball, you are involved with 100%. Every single touch, you got to be there. You got to touch the ball, and, and that's the love of beach volleyball. And the more fun playing the beach, sunny, diving on the sand. 
yeah, that was that was the perfect sport that I could. No, nah, I mean that's the best decision I've ever made in my life. Very good. For a lot of American players, if we have any regrets about volleyball, um, the, a lot of the beach guys, if you look at Reed Pretty or if you look at some of these other players, a lot of them feel like they got out of the indoor game too late. You know, like John Hyden. A lot of people don't know John yes. Hyden played in the Olympics for indoor. He was an indoor um, really? 1996. He played in Atlanta uh, uh, wow. in the 96 Olympics. They called him Whiskers back then. Um, people forget Kerry Walsh oh. played in the 2000 Olympics indoor and yes. before she yeah. uh, this and that. So it's I'm very, very happy for that our audience listening to you know that you made yeah. uh we call it lead decision like lebron take his decisions to south beach yeah, yeah, you took your you yeah. took you're taking your talents to doha beach you know yes, so yeah. very intelligent decision because what happens for indoor guys who get out too late the, 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 our, our bodies are already wrecked you know uh, like yes. yeah like I'm, I'm injurious yeah like i'm 51 i got out when i was 45 too late <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I played one That's Manhattan Beach Open five years ago, 47 years old, just wow. for fun. And but that was it. Yeah. Um, just, you know, you got to do it once. And and honestly, yeah, at some point, at some point, if this ever goes international, we we dude, we have to get you and Ahmed here, man. We have to yeah. get you and Ahmed here, man. Period. Yeah. What? Yeah, well, yeah, well, <laughs> I wish one day we can be we we able to play the mm -hmm. EVP. That's that's one of the yeah, that's one of my um, uh, favorite tournament that I really dream about to play because yeah. how oh the the industry of beach volleyball in the US is really huge. Yeah, it's really huge, and I know it's when it's, it's, it's hey when it's done right. I love. Sorry. Yeah. Go. So let's see. Hopefully, one day, one yeah. day I could be or we could play there. Get the invitation, and hopefully. It's gonna be really fun, and also the first time to play with the wisdom ball. They do. They let you, if they let you play in Manhattan Beach, you're gonna have this guy say, "Hey, Sharif, you can stay at my house." <laughs> One guy's gonna be like, "Hey, Sharif, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. Whatever you want me to make you for food, we got it." This guy's like, "Hey, Sharif, do you sing karaoke? Come out to Tower 12 <laughs> Thursday night." So yeah, yeah. we will That's welcome. What I, love. I speak That's for what all I of love. us when we um, when people are out there balling, having a good time doing our thing. I speak. For for so many yeah. people, we would they would welcome literally welcome you with open arms, you know. Yes. Um, the guy I'm coaching That's right now, saying. yeah. Listen, the guy That's I'm coaching, I'm Jeff Samuels, he's he's staying at my house. He's the, um, Samuels. Oh. Um, he won the box jump competition five years in a row. He's like this guy who's six one, but just wow. psh, um, he might stick his head in the room. But he's staying with me now for the AVP. But we would 100 percent welcome you with open arms, man. Uh, that's um, what I was saying. The industry of beach is huge there, and you know it's really fun. You know, you even sometimes forget about winning or losing because how people gonna you know, welcome you, you win or you lose. You feel like still a champ, you know. Yeah, you showed up. That's, you showed up, yeah. and, and you showed out. That's what you, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah. Listen, I live in California, but I still speak like a New Yorker. <laughs> I'm from. I'm a kid from Brooklyn, which is a different country. Oh, cool. All right, it's like a different country. Yeah, Brooklyn's different. Ah, it's like different. a different planet. <laughs> so, I said I'm from Brooklyn, different country, because it goes to our next subject. Um, you are from Senegal originally, right? Yeah. Um, and Ahmed is Gam uh, Gambian. Yeah. Right. What made you guys, uh, was it volleyball exclusively that made you guys make the active choice to just to, to um, train and move to Doha and make that your residence? Yeah, but for me, like, it's all the credit, it's for Qatar. So that's why even sometimes we don't even want to talk about the, the background and all this stuff because mm -hmm. at the end, we feel like um, we are, because when, when we came here, we were nothing. Yeah, we are not the shape for shape. So Qatar makes us who we are right now. So I yeah. give all the credit to Qatar. So yeah, exactly. There's nothing to there's, there is nothing to talk about of background. I don't. I even even sometimes I don't, people ask me about this. This and I, so like no. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to be treated as a don't have to. 
Look, a, a I just told you. I just told you I'm from Brooklyn, <laughs> right? Yes. And I'm on the other yes. side of the country getting it in, right? I, yes, do I want to talk sure. about Brooklyn? May, uh, maybe, yes. like uh, when we're not talking about volleyball. Sure, let's yes, let's talk sure. the Brooklyn Nets. I got a I got yes. a Buffalo Bills hat right here. Let's talk the Bills. Oh. We talk that later, man. <laughs> you know, that's my yes, football sure. team, by the way. America. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, sure. American I, football I, team. I, 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 Hmm. Yeah, I follow it. I follow NFL. Yeah, so no, but Seydu told me a funny joke. Um, he says, "Jason, where am I from?" That's how he talks, right? And I'm like, um, "I said Africa." He says, "No, Africa has 54 countries." <laughs> and I said, "Okay." I said, "Seydu, where am I from?" He says, "New York City." I said, "No, New York has New York City has five boroughs." <laughs> he says, "Okay, Brooklyn." <laughs> I said, don't be an ass, man. <laughs> he was right. He was right. He was right. I, I guess what I was getting at, uh, it wasn't a matter about where you guys were from. I wanted to get into how other African countries are trying to raise money so they can produce their national teams. They do. So as you sad. know, they has been going at it. so sad. Yeah, they has been going at it for quite some time for Ghana, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, Tanzania. Um, I think our guy out there is trying to do some stuff in Tanzania or whatever. So um, is it about uh, finding ways to get the money in? Because there, there are some people that are willing to, um, you know, especially in the United States and other countries. So d is the obstacle maybe getting the money in? And you don't have to answer this. I don't know how free speech yeah, works sure. in Qatar, okay? So, yeah, sure. you know, I get to say what yeah. I want here, but I ain't trying to yeah, I ain't sure. trying to get you in yeah, trouble, sure. okay? Freedom ain't free. Yeah, no problem. Uh, um, no problem. It's what obstacles would, uh, like if, let's say my company, let's say my wife, the capital group, they want to they wanna send Tanzania like $10,000. Um, what is there anything that would get in the way of that? Or, or is, this, is, is that just something, you know, that Tanzania would allow to happen? You know, it took me four months. I sent them 16 volleyballs, some, some Mizuno, some low cut high top sneakers. And it took, I spent $1,200. Uh, well, my friend, we we all did because my wife would drop yeah. kick my my wife would drop kick me if I said if that was my money. But we all chipped in twelve hundred dollars, and it took four months just to get them equipment there. What what the hell is going that's, on that's, in there? Hmm? Uh, I really don't know because it's so yeah. sad because it's like I'm uh, having a lot of diamond and you don't know how to take care of it. Yeah, that's a very good answer. That's, Actually, that's, that's a not, not, that's a very that's the listen. That was a, that no, say. that's it's the like best having, answer. Having a diamond and you don't know how to take off it, and you're just exposing without no protection, nothing. Mm -hmm. So because they had, they had, they have so many, so many talents. Yeah, you can't imagine. I saw well, yeah. Seydu right now is coaching, and he was showing me some some guys playing sixes, and these kids are 16, 17, and just their skill set looks tight. They're getting it in. You know, Sharif, I'm glad he's out there doing his thing. I'm glad you're out there doing your thing. Um, back to the volleyball scene a little bit. What team? When you see them in your pool, uh, what team do you see and you and you have a big smile on your face because you because you like playing them? Well, you like playing everybody, but is there a particular yeah. team you see in your bracket that you're like, all right, I get to play this team again? I mean, it's, 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 it's there is nothing like um because in the top level you don't you don't even think about who you who you who you crossing. You just think about how how am how am I gonna play against them? So for us. Sometimes you could just say, okay, this team, I could beat them on this team. Okay, I'm a favorite. But but for us, every time when we think like that, we lose. Every time when we think like that, so we, during the process, we learn it from that. We learn it that, okay, don't ever underestimate your your um, uh, your opponent. So yeah. we, we learn from that because we had so many chances to, to, to play better and to beat the team and go to the next round so we were like okay we're all right we're gonna be we're gonna be all right we're gonna yeah. be all right and then we lose so since that since that part is over we just focus on how we play we play even we play the we, we don't even care about the numbers we yeah. are seed number one or seed number three or seed number 15 it doesn't matter at yeah. the end of the day the team you go meet they won't give you a privilege Nope. They're gonna come to kick your ass. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, hi, so, I'm Sharif. I don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah so they don't care about who you are. You are seat number one or seat number two. So at the end of the day, you're gonna come here and to, if you can finish the game 21 0, mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. And then go home. I believe 
Sharif, that um, championships are not won by blowouts anyway. They're won by two points. Championships, uh, um, champions are decided. When you look back, when you won uh, the third uh, stop at Cancun. In fact, mm -hmm. I'll go back. How about let's go back to the first one. Yeah, that was Mullen Sorum. The, both of those games, it was 23, 22, 20, and 21, 19. Yes. So I always tell my friends, and I coach juniors. Um, I've coached a little bit of college. I was John's assistant, John Mayer's assistant at LMU, Loyola Marymount. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I tell I tell all of these kids coming up, championships are are decided by two points. And when you win and you yes. look back at the scores or whatever, you're like, yeah. oh, that could have yeah. went another way. <laughs> oh, that yes. could have went another way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a hundred percent focus. You know, since it's the game because. It's like um uh, one point one point one 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 until one period. So you just boost yourself to play much better than he, but but than your op opponent because that's the difference. In the highest level, that's the difference. You don't have to play. Even you play a seven point, you can play some teams. You can play seven point, and then you win. <laughs> yeah, because but it's still only one win. Play better, but you yeah. play. Yes, and but in, in the highest level, you gotta play. Even even playing nine point is not enough. Yeah, you gotta play maybe more than ten, more than one hundred percent, maybe two hundred percent to win. Yeah. So and and that two hundred percent can be these two points you're talking about. Yeah. Just just two points can make a difference. It's just like, it's it's, really, it's, it's about it's how really you finish. Mental, it's really mental work. Yes, it's really mental work. Just forget about the score. Just focus on point by point, point mm. by point. Like I can say, I I don't I I remember doing the. All um, um, during the Olympics, the the pool play. I never thought about the, the score. I was just playing. What's next? What's next? What at the end was fun, you know. At the end was fun. We yeah. were like, okay, let's just have fun because uh, sometimes mm -hmm. I just go to the serve and the ref just oh, it's not you. I said, okay, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> I just because I, I was not focused on who's who's serving next or it's me or how is the score. I never look back at the score because I know that I'm pretty really good. Each ball, I'm trying to make it up. Yeah. Well, I think, all right, I already, you know, we've both been in this game for a long time, but for college, um, yeah. I went to school for theater, theater performance. My fine, I have a fine, mm -hmm. my fine arts degree is in acting. And yeah. this is the commonality for volleyball. If you go on the stage saying, I'm going to be good, you're not going to be good. <laughs> It's not by You're not going to be good, right? Uh, um, mm -hmm. And it's very, very, very much like volleyball. Very much like volleyball. Um, there's an actress, Lauren Bacall. She, mm -hmm. The old black and white, Humphrey Bogart's wife did all the black and white films. Yes. Key Largo, yeah. Key, um, yeah. uh, The Big Sleep, Oh Baby Just Whistle. Um, mm -hmm. She said she did 100 performances. And there's a way she asked for the sugar for her tea. Um, the first five performances. Uh, and and it was funny, and the audience was laughing. Then she tried to play to it, and for ninety performances, Sharif, no one laughed. And then the last five performances, people started laughing again, and they said, "What did you do?" She said, "I asked for the sugar, and not for the laugh." <laughs> so, so yeah, and my audience is like, "Why the what the hell is this got to do with volleyball? Why is this guy telling yeah, this dumb ass story?" No, but it's yeah, it's I'm like Kanye West. I'm bringing it back. Okay, it's, it yeah. all comes back to this. If for the people who are patient, yeah. but very much like volleyball, like you said, don't ask for the win. Just ask ask for the point. Ask for the play. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, because then after at the end at the end of the day you go at the end of the game you're gonna be like oh, I'm leading five points ten points okay mm -hmm. yeah see how That's that works <laughs> just, focus, just just yes. yeah it's happened to me it's it's happened to us a lot of time we don't focus about the score we just go yeah. play we just go play and then oh boom we are leading ten points five points yeah well um, if you look at the score Sharif right like. If you're leading by five, like even if you win that game, you kind of you might have messed yourself up for the second set, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's sure. It's brilliant. How much does your coach um, mental work? Um, how much mental work do you do with your coach? A lot. Um, yeah. Because because being a coach, okay, everybody can be a coach, but being a coach that who who was there playing in the highest level, that's the that's a big difference. Because I've been working with some coach, but the coach right now we have 
he's telling you everything because he he was there he was not sitting outside watching he was there playing and he he's a world champ mm-hmm. you know yep. he's a world champ and he played so many tough games and he managed so well yeah. so every every situation he told us out in this situation whenever this situation happened that's the best way to react that's the best way to play that's the best way to forget we even talk not just like okay we come come to my room we don't discuss but no we go to the restaurant we just have fun we yeah. discuss about it we just say oh you remember yeah. this moment what you did and you just said okay i did this 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 I was like oh next time better do like this and forget about this 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 and then go ahead at the end of the day you 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 you, you won't have it like um, it's going to be a natural natural reaction that's why that's why sometimes we prefer to practice alone to fix this type of situation because he he told us so many secrets that nobody maybe some place they don't know about it right is so he's also your sports psychologist and your coach yes you... he's a coach and he's a yeah. sports psychologist he's giving us the key how yeah. to success and all this stuff i think it's amazing when you have guys who play the game right and, yeah but and they're able to teach it um because to me the com- there are so many great players that can't teach it because it's about the, the communication yes because sorry you, you're gonna say you, something you could you could you could be you, you could be a great player but how to but how to teach what you've been done and in type of situation what what you were thinking it's not easy it's not given it's not uh it's not given to everyone now there yeah. are some players they could be they 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 were the top player great player skills and all this stuff but they cannot teach or they cannot be a coach being mm-hmm. there try to know what this player are thinking in that moment yeah but the, the coach we have he has he he, he could read uh, I, I can say like in the in the bronze medal i know i'm not saying the bronze medal during all the game that we play in the olympics he was in the player lounge watching the game not in the court yeah he's Good for him. Got a little, got yes. a little bubbly, right? He's got a little bubbly, yes. chilling back like yeah. a gangster. Just kind of. Yes. <laughs> you was, you guys serve a ball out. He's like, ah. But he yeah. was not. He it's was, okay. Yeah. It's all right. He was, he was out there <laughs> drinking mate, the Argentinian tea. So he was just, he was, he, and also in the TV, it was more easier for him to re- mm. repeat the action. Mm-hmm. to see oh in this moment what this guy did and what this guy did so yeah that's that's the that's the, that's a really powerful thing that I'm I'm grateful to yeah that I I knew that the first day we start to practice with him I knew that it was a match or something I it don't was, know I don't yeah, know it was a match I won't yep yes let me tell you something that was a all right match. basketball right Isaiah Thomas, longtime NBA player, yes. became the coach yeah. from for my team, the Knicks. Oh no, well, was yeah. my team. I ain't, they're not my team no yeah. more. I turned in my Knicks card. I'm t- I'm fed up with it until <laughs> until Dol- Dolan sells the team. I'm a Nets fan. Yeah, me so too. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Okay. That's where I'm from, bro. Yeah. So no, yeah. but until Dolan sells the team, then come see me. You know. But until then, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, dude. I can't even go to a restaurant near Madison Square Garden because I think the Knicks might contaminate the meat. Okay, I'm not. Oh, you know, I'm not, no. I hate Sharif, them. No. I hate them. They talk too loud. Oh my god. <laughs> no, oh, but all right. Here's the point I was trying to make. I, right, I, Isaiah please. Thomas, longtime player, became their coach. He was not a very good coach, and then, but this is an NBA champion. But then for Detroit, his coach, the Detroit Pistons, Chuck Daly from the '80s. Uh, with the you know the bad boys, yeah. two rings. He has never dribbled a basketball. He's never played a day of basketball in his life. So, so the point I'm I guess I'm echoing your sentiment. The point I think we're trying to make to our audience listening is how you communicate stuff. Like if you're not a former player, you have to study it like you've never studied it before in your life. Jeff Van Gundy, Jeff Van Gundy's only played high school, you know, and he's like, I love, I love listening to Jeff Van Gundy. He's a, he's a little bit of a yes. drama queen, but New Yorkers, yeah. that's how we do. Yeah. <laughs> so, because yeah. because when you when you're when you're a great player and you study the game, because some players they don't study the game, they just go and play. Yep. They don't study the game. That's and some, the and, the- and coaches, some coaches, if they only reflect on what they experience, then they're only limited to that, and the, and the players are only limited to that. So, um, of course. yeah. Who's your basketball team? Which team you? You, you said Nets. You're a Brooklyn guy. Who you, who no. you like? Uh, I'm a, I'm a really fan of LeBron James. Yep. So, but in the East, I support them, uh, the Nets. Yeah, 
I'm a big. I'm so happy for. I'm so for. I'm so happy for the Milwaukee for this championship. But yes, I'm a Nets fan. Yeah. I, to be honest, I love Brooklyn. They'll get back. Even some. They'll yeah, come they back. They'll get back. They'll come Trust back. Me. Yeah, they'll they be will back. They'll be the toughest team in the West, in the East. Trust yeah. Me. I mean, you can't pick three three bigger drama queens though than than Kevin Durant, James Harden, and, and Kyrie Irving, who thinks the world is flat. And Kyrie Irving talking about the world is flat, no. man. Come on, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, trust me. But you know, what if, what whatever happened, you know, they 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 really they really know each other. They know who's better than yeah than each other. They know who's who's the guy of the. At the when the when is the the clock is from yeah. one to five seconds, they know who's gonna get the ball. Hundred percent, and yeah. I think they know. So I think if that, they that, stay together the for four years, if they uh, for just oh, another three, if they st- yeah, the chemistry is already there. The talent we already yeah. know is there. Um, and they really wanted to play. They yeah. really want to play with with each other. You know, sometimes some players, mm-hmm. some injured players, I feel like they don't want to play with some guy, but the business industry forced them to to play. Like I can say. Um, Irving wanted to leave uh, the Cleveland, yeah, but he didn't want to be in the Boston, being under the shadow of Jason. Right, hundred percent. Yep, I like. And then you know what I like about LeBron James though, I like LeBron like because off the court, the man's an ambassador mm-hmm. to his sport oh, and, and to man, the and to the world and to the country. He he's different. He married his high he's school different. sweetheart, right? You never yeah. hear any stories about him getting in trouble. Um, yeah. You give this. 18 year old millions and millions yes. of dollars and instead of acting like instead of acting you like never a g hear, uh, you right? never about drama drama yeah. on him mm-hmm. and he's really professional that's why he he's the only guy at his age that playing this highest level yeah. he's, he's no one he sent more kids to college he has sent more yeah. kids to college than united negro college <laughs> funds okay <laughs> he's the, he's the, He's the, he's he's that for me. And that's what he was better than NJ off the court. Yeah, he's the goat. Yeah, off the court. Yes. Yeah. I mean, off the court. Yeah, on the court you got he, MJ, he, he, you got I, Kareem, yeah, you got um Russell. Yeah, but every yeah. listen, every ten or fifteen years, you got to have a player like that. In the sixties, it was Russell who won coach. He won coach of the year and player of the year because at that year, that yes. year he was he was allowed to coach his team and play. He was a player yeah. coach. So that how sick is that? And then you got Kareem. In the seventies or whatever, then in the eighties, eighties and nineties, you got Jordan, you know, uh, Berg, Johnson, and yeah. listen, LeBron's got probably like three good, three good more years left, and um, of course, and, of course, yeah. But you know what's impressive about him, and I'm gonna bring it back to you, Kanye again, Kanye mm-hmm. West style, um, mm-hmm. Sharif. In this climate, especially in America, it's really yeah. easy to go back into someone's past, right, and you take their worst moments. All of their worst moments, put all those worst moments together and like throw out all the good stuff and say that's who you are, yeah. right? It's really easy yeah. to do that. I think it's lazy, but it's easy. But with that being said, you're not going to find a whole lot on LeBron James. <laughs> uh, um, we're not going to find a whole lot on Sharif. That was the point I was going to say about you. Like, like people can look into your past and and look and and anyone's past and. That's the one thing I like about you and LeBron. You you've kept you you've kept your 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 brand and your name uh, and and I guess to honor your family or friends or whatever. Yeah, sure. You kept it yeah. uh, what we call straight and simple, straight and simple. Yes, John Mayer because, from LMU, because, <laughs> straight and yeah. straight and simple. <laughs> of course, of course, because that mm. that's 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 the power for for us. Because no matter what, I just mm-hmm. stick with my friends and. I'm a family guy, you know. Outside of, yeah. if I go out, out outside of the of my home, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm a sheriff. I'm the sheriff that the guy you know. There it is. But inside of the home, I'm a normal yeah, guy. Yeah. Because a lot of guys they don't know how cool am I, but I don't I, because I don't like to talk about myself like that. But nah, that's. I, I'm not. I'm not a drama guy, and um, yeah. That's I, but that's why I snuck one on you. I to, I felt like if I could, we could talk about Ahmed first, I could tr- I could yeah. trick you. I could trick you into talking about yourself. So I got I got you for a few minutes, man. You know <laughs> that's it. that's it's the psychology. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Look, I don't true. I don't know how long you you got to go or if you got practice or this or that. But I wanted to ask you on one more thing, um, mm-hmm. just for the fans um, who followed you at Cancun. Talk to me about the conditions out there. I talked to Kame Shaw 
Came Shock uh, played with Theo Brunner, and he 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 yeah. was actually on the podcast. Yeah, I watched and, um, I watched I watched that that, that podcast. Yeah, and he said it was. And, and here, Manhattan Beach, we have a directional wind. Sometimes it's strong, yes. sometimes it's whatever, but yes. it's one direction. Diagonal this way, diagonal this way, or just straight. It was diagonal. Can, it was diagonal. Cancun, they said, was swirly wind. Uh, talk to yes. me about the conditions in Cancun. Take us through that. It was super wind, and the, I would say like um, uh, the uh, the sand was a bit heavy. Some, some court was like deep, deep sand. So and imagine it was... Imagine it was windy and really hot. Can you imagine that? Yeah, that was a mix. That was a mix that's, of concrete. That's that's just that was that was crazy. And, and you know, being there for three weeks, every time for us we were like going, okay, we reached the final. Oh, we good. We 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 get silver. And then the next after two days we gotta go back do the same thing. <sighs> Jeez. <laughs> Mentally it yeah. was was tough. And then we go back and we good. Okay, we good. Mm-hmm. We get silver again. Oh two days one day off the next day we gotta play again we gotta go back so it was was really mentally we were like exhausted yeah at the end you know sometimes before to go to the court i was like oh i wish i could lose and just go home i, I already made it to the olympics yeah dude i <laughs> so know how you, you feel once, yep. so once 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 you are there so warm up start you want to be like mm-hmm. hell no i'm yeah. gonna be there i'm gonna be here to win because this guy wants to win too yeah, dude, let me tell you something. When I was in the army, um, mm-hmm. we go on these runs, right? Like sometimes mm-hmm. it's five miles, sometimes it's ten. And I wanna quit the first the first quarter of a mile. I feel like I don't know if I could do this. But when we get through it, and like you yes. said, when you have people, a support system, because in the army, uh, what we yeah. do is we, we yeah. sing cadence. Like the instructor sings yeah. cadence. Hey, hey, yeah, hey. Yeah. And then we yeah. just get jacked up. And next thing you know, yeah. you know, yeah. dude, we could run those last four backwards. <laughs> you know, because you're just Whoa. amped. You got this support system. Everyone's rallying around each other. Uh, that's something on a much bigger scale. Like, uh, of course, not like beach volleyball has two people. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's so you mentally pushing through that. Um, how, how much yes. of that has to do with just you two bouncing um, positivity off of each other? Yes, I, that was, I think it was the kind of we were trying to get the balance because at the end, emotionally, we were down, you know. Mm-hmm. We were like, okay, we are tired. Not physically, but mentally we were tired. And we, 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 we get to the final twice and we couldn't make it. And if we look back to the ranking, oh, we are already to the we are already on on the Olympics, so we were like, okay, we're playing good, so why not to just keep doing it? And we spoke to our coaches. He was telling us, guys, I know, you know, you are tired mentally because we were really playing really physically in the first two tournaments. Physically, we were like playing hundred percent, serving good, doing the side up good, but you know, the motivation was like, okay this we lost twice to the norway guy and yeah yeah now they are not here we can make it yeah you're like the and, cat yeah, yeah you said the cats away the mice play <laughs> yeah so they're not here so yeah. we can make it and we don't see we didn't and some teams they left after the second tournament they left they couldn't make it mentally also but I think because, to, to Anders Mull, that I think them not playing that third tournament was intelligent right he I, I understand yeah. he had some knee issues do you have some issues with his right knee or something like that? I didn't know. I, yeah, I, I maybe. Didn't, I yeah, like, know. ah, okay. Me. Yeah. Yeah, so, so it was like, um, they were like, you guys are crazy mm-hmm. to play in the third tournament. After the second tournament, they were like, you guys are crazy. Yeah. You gotta go back. We are tired. Yep. Mentally, because the bubble was really, was nice place. You got a lot of things to do, but like, this was the first time ever in beach volleyball, like, to play in the bubble that you don't have to go out. You are just there. Yeah. You cannot go out and it was mm. heavy. It was heavy for everyone, but you know there it is. you gotta have you gotta have a higher yeah. goal to to pass through that. Yeah, you I mean it definitely limited your um forms of escapism. Like some people like, yes. like they like to go fishing, take a break from volleyball, they like this, they yes. they do that. For me it's um karaoke. Like I like I like piano bars like music or whatever they give me the mic and i just boom i just cut loose so that there's levels to that too that's and that's me that's my level yeah, when um sure. when my my um escapism became my career which was volleyball um oh. singing karaoke twice a week that's my so when covid hit 
there was no yeah. um, karaoke, there was no piano bar, and I'm just like, hmm, I thought I was good at doing nothing. They told me to do nothing for a year. I thought I was good, like, right? You Didn't you think you was good at doing mm -hmm. nothing? Come on, didn't you, yeah. didn't you yeah. think you were good at doing nothing? <laughs> you know, yeah. break out some video games. I, I, thought, I thought I was, yeah, I was playing FIFA, <laughs> I was playing 2K online, All right. and I was like, but at the end, we were, we were, we were really working hard, yeah. because we had the option to, we had like a full gym, especially for us. Okay. And man, and we were working like during the whole year. We didn't stop. Yeah. We just missed it, the competition, but we didn't stop. Didn't the NBA do a good job showing everybody that though? They created the bubble, like that Disneyland oh, or whatever. I think and they the, showed everybody, hey, no one gets in, no one gets that out. Was, that was the best showcase that like people could just copy from the NBA because it was like the best thing. I don't know who thinks about that, but. He's that was a, a great idea, right? Yeah. That, I think that saved a lot of disciplines, even even the Olympics, coming with the bubble. Yeah. So came from the NBA, and I think that's the, one of the best thing that w could save all this event during that year until now, so far. No, nah, no doubt. Um, and with the Olympics, right? The Olympics have a village. So the Olympic yes. Village, I didn't, I, in my opinion, I've never been to the Olympic Village. Uh, actually, no, I have, um, Barcelona. I was in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you! But you would think with the Olympic Village, as far as creating a bubble was concerned, you would think that would have been it would be easy for them to copy the NBA. And I was hoping, like Tokyo, I think did they do well with that? They they do they did yeah. well enough with that. Yeah, it was 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 quite it was quite it was quite fine because yeah. there is a issue. It's okay. the COVID thing. We we gotta deal with that. Yeah, yeah. We gotta deal with that. We cannot we cannot ask for a yeah. perfect situation. Mm -hmm. Because they cannot, they couldn't. They just did their best to, to keep that even, that even, mm -hmm. because that even could could be said, okay, no more Olympics. Right. But they did, they did their best to to host that even, and it was a risky for them also yep. for the health of the country. Yes, so, because it's multiple countries. You're right. It's not like the NBA. Yes. It's not like the NBA where everybody's already domestic. Yes. Everyone's already anyone American. can come and bring yeah. a new virus, and nobody mm. knows. Wow, jeez. Nobody knows. What's so on the menu, game. Sharif? Uh, br fresh brand new virus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. It was like even mentally mm. every day you got to do the so, PCR. Mm. You got to spit on the bottle and check if you are free from COVID. Yep. <laughs> it was really stressful. Can you imagine? Yeah. It was a different. That, that was the first time ever for me to have the experience to be at the village of the Olympics. It was the last Olympics mm -hmm. in Rio. Yep. Because it was so far from the venue, so we were like close to one hotel in okay. front of the venue. But this is my first time being in the village. And I, I think with this, even with the COVID, it was cool and fun. Good. Seeing all these athletes and, you know, go, you meet mm -hmm. new people and that was really fun. Cool. Did you meet anyone uh, from the uh, Dream Team, from the NBA team? Oh, no, they were in the hot because imagine oh, different. the dream team. Got was, it, different pockets. Yes, no, no, they were, they were not even in the village. They were in one hotel close to the village. So. Okay. Yeah. Because because imagine like the Kevin Durant going to the, going to the um, uh, restaurant eating and for sure he won't eat before we come take picture every single minute. Yeah. But I saw Luca Donkic. I took a picture with him. Yeah, Luca's is cool. He okay. went, um, yeah, it's cool. Did he win MVP this year? He won MVP this year. I think Greek Freak won mm -hmm. last year, and Luca Luca won this year. Luca won um, no. MV, NBA and uh, MVP this year from Dallas Mavericks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, this year? Yeah, I thought Greek Freak won the two years before, and um, yeah, and, and Luca Doncic won um, uh, Dallas Mavericks. He won. He won uh, Most Valuable Player season MVP, and that's pretty cool because yeah. it's it's like yeah. the the American thing in three three. Uh, the last three MVPs went to international players, so that's a testament of course, to. Of course. Yeah, but look, that's a testament to how the AVP could wake up and do this, man. It could be. No, it doesn't it have not to Luka. be. Was not, yeah. No, was not Luca. Was the Joker? No, a uh, Jokic. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's Jokic. Duh. Jokic. See? Yeah, with Jokic. Man, you gotta give with me. Jokic. I promise you, there's no vodka in here, man. I just got. I just got it wrong. I just got it wrong. I, okay, I, no, no alcohol not, in there for me. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, Jason, stay off the sauce. <laughs> yeah. Me either. All right, cool. Me I'm either. actually going to um, I'm gonna go back to Manhattan Beach 
um, check out some of these people. I'll live stream too if you want to go yeah. back on, check out some of the people, yeah, say sure, hi to sure. some I'll people, listen that. Uh, uh, yeah, before yeah. we go, is um, let let the audience know like your you, the YouTube handle or if people want to know more about Sharif. Is there a website or just your your um Instagram handle? Um, just my Instagram know. and um, yeah. yeah. What's it called? Just, just the Instagram, uh, Sharif Qatar. Sharif, Sharif Qatar. Qatar. Yeah. yeah, and then you can find everything, all my journey and everything. Boy, okay, you made it easy for yeah. everybody. I even, I, 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 yeah, I even have a a friend of mine, Scott. I have a Scott. He's there. Davenport. He's there in Manhattan. Our Scott. Davenport. His name is Scott. He, yeah. Yes. He's, he's there and good coach yeah, too. He's my guy. I just do. He's, he's yeah. a good coach too, man. He's a good coach. Yeah. 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 I have a guy, yeah. Rob, Rob McLean. He said he just did a 12 o'clock session with him. He's like, oh my God, that was so good. It was so, you know, I learned so much. He's very easy to speak yeah. to as well. You know, he's a, he's a, yeah. a, like a real human being, you know? Yeah. And Sharif, so are you, man. All right. So listen, this, ladies and gentlemen, this is Sharif. He might love you, but I don't love you. In fact, I can't stand you. Okay. So for all of you at home, for all of you on your iPad or your iPhone, I know you got a new one. For all of you on your <laughs> desktop, okay? For Sharif, I am Jason DeBeas. I'm gonna stay with me after this. I'm gonna hit my music. But for everybody yeah. else, this is episode 103. We're out. Come check out the Option Podcast on OptionDB.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're gonna love what you hear.